It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is the Locked On Auburn Podcast, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast, presented by our good friends at Fetch Me Delivery. It's Friday, so a lot of you will be either listening to this on Friday today or tomorrow on Saturday, and Fetch Me is open late So if it's a little past midnight or so, I think up until 2 a.m., they'll be delivering fresh, delicious food. I could have used that tomorrow or last night. Excuse me. Yeah. I could have used that tomorrow. Tomorrow. (laughs) It is true. After after the game, probably going to need it then. Oh, that's true. It'll fetch me this, fetch me that, eh? I love it. And and I think Areach is actually on the list of things that they deliver. So, yeah, Yeah. use use promo code FETCHME20 for your first delivery free. You could do that through the free Fetch Me app just search fetch me in your phone's app store or you can go to fetchmedelivery.com zach blackerby here with you and you've already heard the sweet sweet voices of painter sharpless and michael pappas of espn 1067 gentlemen happy friday we are all obviously thriving this morning yeah i'm doing great yeah good vibe around the office i'm I'm a big fan guys i want to start off today's show with with some of the chatter that is kind of uh buzzing around some of the, the recruits that are coming in, uh, you know, a lot of early enrollees are scheduled to get in town this weekend. Keith Niebuhr of Auburn Undercover, you know, I say it all the time. I think he's the best in the business in regards he's to been recruiting. He's down at the, uh, the UA stuff. Yeah, that was apparently last night. I haven't found a whole lot of info on that, but I, we do have some stuff on there. But, yeah, he's got, he's got write-ups on Auburn Undercover and, and most of his VIP stuff. And if you don't subscribe to that, I think you should. If you listen to the show every day, like a lot of you do, yeah, that is just solid, solid content. Um, but I love the eagerness that we're seeing and the eagerness that we're hearing from all these guys that, that are going to be early enrollees, and they want to contribute right away. And some guys want to start. There's a write-up on Ladarius Tennyson, and it's in the headlines. So I don't feel like I'm giving up, uh, giving a, a whole lot away, but he wants to start. He wants to start in 2020. He has said that he thinks that, that is a goal for him. And Ladarius Tennyson, I mean, he's, he's a four-star nickel from Florida, and guys, I mean, what do you think about the position group as far as him having a chance to start at nickel? I think with the defensive backs, I mean, there's going to be a mass exodus, especially if Noah Benogany goes pro. So you look at Christian Tutt, who will be here next year, and it's like, I don't think he's going to stay at nickel. I think he's going to move to one of the outside corners. And Roger McCreary is maybe the other one. And then you look at the nickel spot. I think he's got a chance to start. I, I mean, I, I know a lot of these guys are going to say, hey, I want to contribute right away. He actually, due to position and the need, I think he's got a legit shot at it. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple questions. To they are both relevant. Number one, okay. So, have we gotten to the point now where teams are recruiting guys to play nickel, not just to play corner? Yeah, yeah. He, he's listed as a nickel slash star. Interesting. Okay, I was not aware that uh, we went that far. Uh, I thought we were still just doing the whole. Well, you see guys listed as a strong side or weak side defensive end. You see guys every now and then listed as like a boundary corner. Yeah, oh, I, that's I, true. Okay, okay. So I don't think it's I don't think it's much different than that. That yeah, and, and why not? It is such an important position now. Yeah, the that is, the, the focus on the nickel has become such a a bigger thing in football at all levels because that's most people's base now. Most yeah. people that the whole three four four three thing that's kind of gone. Out, I mean, you're running nickel now. You're having. More than mm-hmm. likely, you're having two linebackers on the field now. So anyway, all right. So that was one Second question. question. Second question. Uh, is Sherwood a safety or a corner? He's a safety. Okay. Then, yes, I think he's got a great chance uh, to, to see ample playing time next season, if not be listed as a starter. I mean, right now, I mean, what would you guys say to this? If your corners next year, your starting corners next year, let's, let's assume Noah leaves, mm-hmm. is on the outside you have Tut and McCreary. And then at your safeties, you have Smoke and Sherwood. And then at Nickel Tennyson? I'm not against it. I think that sounds great. I think Peters is going to have something to say about that. I'm higher mm-hmm. on him than a lot of people are. He didn't have a whole lot of playing time this year. So I think that's, um, that's something you got to look at. But I think Roger McCreary is going to be our number one corner next season. Or Auburn's number one corner next season. Okay. I think he's so good. I think he's going to have to be, right? I mean, who else is it? Because I don't think it's Tut. And maybe it's not, uh, but uh, I'm just I'm so excited about Roger McCreary. He had a higher PFF grade than Noah Igbenogany. 
I know smaller sample size, uh, better receivers. I don't know how PFF does their grades, but I'm I'm so excited about Roger McCreary. But to answer your question, yes, I think this guy has a, a very good shot at getting on the field in 2020 a lot. And then uh, another defensive back that will be on campus early, Chris Thompson Jr., another four-star defensive back. He's listed strictly as a safety, but he talked about how— He's from Texas. <laughs> he is from Texas. You're right. Did I say he wasn't? Or no. you, you just put that out there? Okay. I'm just, I'm just letting us Just know. needed everyone to know. Cool. No, that's great. That's great. You guys like pretty much know each other, right? I want, yeah. He's, I, uh, I desperately want for you now on, you, anytime someone's from Texas, whether or not it's obvious, even if it's Jared Stidham, you have to take time to point it out. That is oh, a new so, rule. So Cam Martin just graduated. He's from Texas. There you go. Um, All speaking right. of hold, hold on real people. quick. Hold on real quick. Okay, go ahead. Speaking go of ahead. people from Texas, did anyone see the, uh, the blatant disrespect from the Morris family yesterday? No. At the UA game. Oh, man. So for starters, Chad Morris obviously was there at the game. If to you're watch, about to say what I think you're going to say, I'm going to get angry at you. To watch his son. <laughs> and get really annoyed if you try to do the logic that you're going to do. To watch his son play... Uh, at the Under Armour All America game, yeah. his son is Chandler. Uh, his is son correct. committed. Factually. His son commits to OU. Wow! Yeah, I know the guy. Two Heisman finalists out of the last three, or two winners, and then another finalist this year. Wow! How dare he want to go to that school instead of the one that his dad will be at for two years? Well, let's see where he's going. All right. Wow. Let's see where he's going. I mean, wow! Where are you going with this? Uh, I was going to say Chad Morris was smiling in the picture. Like, come on, man! Yeah, how dare he, he be excited for his a, son? He can't be that happy about it. But the disrespect. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I think he'd be very happy. He's for been his... here for two and a half weeks. How dare his son not come to Auburn? Chandler Morris throws a horns down the disrespect, mm. the blatant disrespect. Horns. I mean, come on, guys. Oh, that's okay. where he was going. That, that's, that's I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm, all right I'm fine with that. With that. And I know horns you don't actually you, you don't actually care about that, do you? Because you're not no, you're not, not like all. a you're not a big UT Austin guy. So no, I'm not. I think it's funny because it you know it blew up and became a whole story because guys were getting Will Greer was getting flags thrown on him for throwing horns down. It is games. absurd. And yeah, that guy made the right choice. All right, just just to wrap up the the, 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 the starting seg- talk? the starting segment that I wanted to deal with Chris Thompson Jr. four star safety. Oh, he's from Texas. <laughs> he, he is from Texas. There you go. Uh, Coach McGriff apparently keeps telling him, like, hey, you better be ready. You be- better be ready for your uh, for your first year because I, I think they're going to use them early and often. So that's that. All right. Um, we got through Coach that. Coach McGriff likes to use his young guys. I mean, we, we've seen it over the last couple of years, right? Smoke was getting playing time as a freshman. Yeah. Peters is getting got playing time early. Uh, Sherwood this season. Tut both last year and this year. Uh, McCreary this season. We can go on. I I can keep going if you want to. He I, loves using those young guys. I'm sure someone out there has done it. I think a bigger part of this story, and it affects more than just Auburn, is that the early enrollee thing is becoming the new norm. Like I, Hi, this is David Locke, CEO of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Instead of saying my name right now, we could be saying your business's name and reaching local, passionate sports fans just like you. Unlike any other podcast. Locked On gives your local company the unique ability to reach local podcast listeners. Not just any podcast listener, a Locked On podcast listener. If your company wants to connect with local sports fans, a predominantly male audience that's well-educated with disposable income, then let's put your company right here on this Locked On podcast. Local fans love to support local businesses. Text the word advertising to 33777 or visit lockedonpodcast.com slash advertising and let us know who you are. We'll get our team to help you out and achieve Locked On advertising success. Once again, text the word advertising to 33777. That's advertising to 33777 or visit lockedonpodcast.com slash advertising. We look forward to talking to you. I would be curious to know what the numbers have become over the last decade or so, because I think in that time it's gone from like having maybe one to three guys do it to probably closer to, depending on the, the class and the team and the year, you know, like half, almost half your roster. You see guys become less sought after recruits if they can't mm-hmm. graduate early because it's like, okay, well, you're not going to do anything your freshman year. You will be redshirted and you do not get a chance to and play until your sophomore year. And I think the larger part of that has this, has, <laughs> is at least twofold and maybe more so, and you guys can add to this if you think it's necessary. But one, I think guys are just more ready. Like they're, 
These programs, the recruiting, it's all starting earlier from weight training to specificity about the position. Yeah. So, and then on top of that, like there's just a huge, people want to start as freshmen. They're capable of starting as freshmen. Their bodies are ready. They, they have the mental capacity and the, the knowledge of the game to do it. And then coaches have come around to the idea that 18 year olds, albeit young and inexperienced, are sometimes still the best player. I think coaches, uh, two things that, that I want to add. One, I think coaches have kind of backed away from the whole, like, we're just not going to play you as a freshman because you're a freshman. I do think there was some of that. And I Absolutely. Think, and I do think, uh, I think the other side of it is I think coaches have gotten better at drawing up plays and drawing up scheme, especially for quarterbacks and wide receivers and offensive players. I think for defense, it varies a little bit, but I think they've done better at putting players in positions um, to succeed. I got a, I got a, I got a question. <laughs> All right. Before we move on, I'm sorry. Was this it gonna be the op- longest podcast ever? Was it an yeah. option for you guys to graduate early? Yes, I could have. My junior year, I thought I was going to leave Auburn High School a semester early, but I ended up having a really fun senior year, pretty much. And I played soccer, and soccer in Alabama is a spring sport, so Got it. I wanted to be a part of that. But yes, it was po- like there was a point in my junior year where the counselor was like, "Do you want to go to college a semester early?" A few of my Two of my friends did it. They went to Auburn. There were two people in my class that did. I went to a small private school locally, and they, uh, but they like transferred in. None of the people that were, like stayed at least Scott their whole time l- left early. I don't think it's I, terribly difficult. It's just a matter of like you have to start soon enough. You have to do it early enough in your high school career to make it a yeah, possibility. I had never heard of someone doing that until I got. Do you to think Auburn. this is interesting? Do you think it's interesting that we're talking about this? Um, a little bit. I, okay. I, I right. mean, I just, I'd never heard of anyone doing it until I got to Auburn. And now, like we're talking about, I mean, guys, these recruits, they're all doing it. I, I mean, think it's it's def- definitely a culture shift, for sure. It's it's changed the way that programs operate, the way they recruit, the way freshmen expect their, their experience as young players to yeah. go. What year do you think they should start offering AP courses? Freshmen. Eighth grade, no. Let's just let's just talk. Let's just give all of our thoughts on education. I did I did AP in the eighth grade. Was it was it offered in the seventh grade at Auburn? I think it started in tenth grade with mine. Yeah, I think it was eighth. Uh, I think mine was tenth. Okay, sick. All right. Any other topics we want to throw out there? How do you guys feel about UBI? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Universal Basic Income, also known as the Freedom Dividend. It's Andrew Yang, and I don't think it's a viable candidacy. But nonetheless, it okay. was a joke. All right. So looking at <laughs> looking uh looking at last night the Under Armour All American game. Um, like I said, I, I haven't been able to find a whole lot of stuff on it last night, but guys that participated in regards to Auburn, um, five-star offensive tackle, Berderick Jones, he is picking between Georgia and Auburn. Auburn fans desperately want him. There's some stuff out there saying that Auburn has a chance. I've seen other people say that Auburn doesn't have a chance. So I'm erring on the side that Auburn doesn't have a chance. I agree with you. I Not agree because you. they don't actually have a chance. It's just that they, the other team has a 51% chance and Auburn has a 49% chance. Do you think chance. it's that close, though? It's probably pretty close, but not close enough that it matters because mm-hmm. George is going to get his signature. Uh, yeah, if I had to pick, I would definitely pick the. Coming from someone who doesn't really know like that much about this guy's recruitment, I just feel like if if, if passes any indication between other blue blood, blood programs, Auburn usually doesn't win those. Five star running back Tank Bigsby played, and then uh, Ladarius Tennyson, and then defensive back Chris Thompson Jr., and then the athletic linebacker Wesley. Steiner, most of the stuff I read was kind of regarding how good Tennyson looked, which kind of backs my statement that I think he's got a chance to start next year. I, just, I don't know a ton about the the guy yet, and I think that everything you're saying seems plausible, and with the turnover at the position, uh, very intriguing because yeah. it's, I'm you know, I think I've said this in the past, giving that defense the benefit of the doubt at this point, like there are real question marks about replacing that elite of a defensive line and what was a formidable secondary this year. Um, I guess we'll end up talking about this a ton this offseason, so maybe want to stay away from the Noah chatter. But uh, assuming we get an answer in the next couple of days, how big of a deal is it? Because I can understand watching Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis, especially watching Jamel Dean if you're Noah, and the way he tested out and it moved his stock up, like why you would go ahead and do that, why you would go ahead and and move on. All right, I want to take a look at some voicemails, and we'd love to to have you call, give your thoughts on the offseason, or 
after uh, after the basketball game tomorrow. We'd love to hear from you. 205-502-4285. Three of these, if we get if we have enough time to get to at least three of these, uh, are, are old. And I uh, just got to looking at them. Sorry about that. But uh, a lot of folks wish us Merry Christmas. And I think we all had a very Merry Christmas, so we appreciate that. All right, first one is... Hey, guys. Love the show. This is uh, Justin from LaFette, Alabama, or Lafayette, however you say it. Hey, Justin. Um, I get everybody's excited for all the recruits coming in, and I am too. It's an awesome recruiting class, but I just I wish that Matthew Hill would get more time. I, I've watched him since he was in high school. He's an athletic freak. He just he's just different when he has the ball in his hands. I don't know if it's because Gus doesn't trust him or other factors, but I just I can't wait to see what he can do in this offense with you know just next year coming up. All right, thanks, guys. What are y'all's thoughts on that? I think we all want and expect Matthew Hill to get more time. Uh, I know Painter and I talked a whole bunch going into the season about how we both expected him to be uh, uh, more of an impact in this fall, but you know, for one reason or another, he hasn't gotten it. Hopefully, he can be more of a more of a player going forward. He's one of the players that I want to be a fly on the wall for the most because it's now two years in a row where the expectations have been pretty high, and I think you could have understood how the freshman year shook out the way it did of like oh yeah this guy's had some nice practices maybe he'll be a contributor sort of like we're talking about in the defensive backfield but if it doesn't work out or you know maybe his development his freshman year just doesn't get as many touches as you'd like fine this year though I thought all right sophomore year he's now had two full off seasons to really work through this and you know there's been some guys like Darius Slayton and Ryan Davis that moved on and so Hill it's just baffling to me like I want to know what he's not doing consistently enough in practice that is not good enough for coaches it seems like he's this era's Marquise McClain Marquise McClain just transferred out I, I kind of think Matthew Hill is going to have a similar career to that because if it hasn't clicked yet I, I I don't think it's going to I'm perplexed but it's one I don't have any answers for like I, I don't understand what it is yeah, because it, it, there's usually positive talk around him. Like, there's not there's with say this is not completely fair, but like with Nick Coe, there was a sort of an underlying uh, 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 a hushed whisper about you know his dedication and commitment and all that, and you know you sort of put stock into some of that. But if it's if it's coming up enough, there's questions about your commitment and your willing to willingness to practice. It's like I haven't heard any of that with Matthew though. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take another uh, let's take another listen. This one's from uh, Warden. Hey, Zach. Uh, this is Gordon. I was listening to the – well, it's yesterday, so now it's just after midnight on the 20th. Uh, so I guess the show for the 19th. He was making comments about how we didn't receive a uh, – or didn't really get an inside guy in the class to replace Derek Brown. Uh, one, I was about to say, I think it's kind of funny that if you did it out the people, you could actually field a full offense and defense with the guys we got to actually send in uh, LOI. But at this point, after, you know, years and years of seeing it, First it was, you know, my Travis Adams, and then it was Derek Brown, and people were like, how are we going to replace this guy? Mm-hmm. And I just – I know it's a little foolish, and – well, I want you to say foolish. I know it might be because we're spoiled with Rodney Garner, but you kind of got to trust the guy. I'm almost willing to, you know, bet my next paycheck that – or hell, my next <laughs> few paychecks that Rodney Garner is going to have someone ready to yeah. step in for Derek Brown next year. Or to have someone behind Tower and Truesdale. But other than that, guys, War Eagle, have a Merry Christmas. And if y'all get the chance, y'all should check out the new Star Wars because it's amazing. All right, later. I enjoyed it. it First some, off, yeah, I really liked the had Star a lot Wars. Of action. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of people nationally didn't like it, but I thought it was really fun. I enjoyed watching it. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see Connus Miller's role in the defense next year. I mean, Tyron Truesdale is going to get a lot of hype over the course of the offseason, and he should. Uh, just to be, you know, devil's advocate here how much success did Truesdale have because he was never doubled I do, I do wonder what I don't I can't answer that question I don't think anybody can but I I do wonder what the line looks like with Derek Brown because his stat sheet always looked um, impressive but one of the things I like about some of the reporters around here who do deeper dives of some of the analytics that's fun when you get to see that Derek Brown is still putting up numbers in a stat sheet, but also he is making everyone else significantly better. Yeah, yeah, freeing up the linebackers and all that. So I don't think we know a whole lot about any of the guys 
on the defense this year compared to next like, year. I'm super stoked about Big Cat. I think Big Cat's going to have a fantastic year next year alongside but what Derek Big, Call. what does Big Cat look like when he gets yeah, attention? Absolutely. Because Marlon and Derek yeah, got all the sure. attention. Well, yeah, it's just like, I couldn't not, say it better myself. No, no, I couldn't say it better. I'm not trying to be negative my, here, but I think that question has to be asked. Yeah, you've got a definite top 10 pick, and we'll see how things go for Marlon. But it does feel like a if, if things really broke right for him, maybe he could be a first-round guy. But I think we would be pretty comfortable saying Marlon's a second- or third-round guy. Yeah. All right, we got, a, we got a call from Chris. Hey, love the show. This is Chris Messick in Chapel Hill, Tennessee. I have a question for all the so-called Auburn fans that wants Gus Malzahn's <laughs> head to roll but just because we've lost the bowl game. I haven't heard anybody on Facebook or anywhere say anything about Kevin Steele's head to roll because the defense played so bad. I don't I don't understand that. I mean I go to one person who has who has brought us to this point, who has the best rec- recruiting class coming into next year, who in in reality would you put in that place to coach the Tigers to put you to where you think you should be at? That makes no sense to me. It just drives me up the wall. Again, I love the show. Listen to it every day. Look forward to it. War Eagle. Goodbye. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, first off, I mean, the, the the second part of that, that's kind of always my question when people are like, okay, it's, it's time to get rid of Gus Malzahn. It's like, all right, who are you going to get that, that that's better? Uh, I understand the frustration, but it's just like, uh, do you want to start over with somebody else? I think that's... It's got to get to that point where it's like, okay, yeah, it's worth it. Uh, in regards to the steel talk, my guess, Chris, is it has to do with what they've done all season, and they've been pretty, pretty stinking um, consistent, and the offense hasn't. And I think that just kind of continued and kind of reared its ugly head again earlier this week. That that is my guess. A fair point by Chris to point out that like essentially sure. that the defense is coached by one guy and that the offense is headed by another, and you're seeing this more and more with coaches where you've got a primary play caller and and basically he's just leaving the other side of the ball alone. And that's not as uncommon, I think, as it once was. I know there's a number of professional coaches doing that. But yeah, I do think it has to do with since Steele got here in 2016, the defense has been the most consistent. This year it had some elite players on it. And on top of it, uh, Gus Malzahn does some things unconventionally. And even though they are sort of their own head coaches within each side of the ball, ultimately Malzahn's the head coach and the thing that he's supposed to be good at hasn't been good. And so he's going to get more criticism. When when Malzahn's offenses were scoring 40 points, 35 points a game in 13 and 14, I don't think people had as many issues. Speaking of which, firing a coach now after a lot of this coaching carousel stuff has already happened puts you way That's true. behind the curve, especially because it's happening after signing day. I mean, Mississippi State, I think since we started recording this podcast, announced they fired Joe Moorhead, and it certainly doesn't look like uh, that's going to end up well. Wow. That's big. Yep. Two years, gone. No one, no one survives the, the peeing in the egg bowl. That's just interesting. Like, What's the advantage of waiting, you're about to ask? You've now, you've yeah. now really set yourself back. Well, I, I think a, a, quite a bit of... They had to have somebody in mind if they were going to do that. The bowl, also, the bowl game experience didn't exactly leave people feeling yeah. invigorated going into the offseason. You know, but it's also, like, it's Mississippi State. But it's not anymore. It's not Mississippi State anymore because Dan Mullen dragged them kicking and screaming as close to the promised land as Mississippi State could ever get. I think and that, so now they expect you know eight or nine wins a season. And for it's not you know, possible for a linebacker to not break their starting quarterback's face right before their bowl game. Um, I also I think Mississippi State is like in a similar situation with Auburn and that that their their program thinks a little their fans think a little bit more highly of their program than where it's actually at. Be sure to tune in to uh, after the game basketball edition with uh, Painter and me tomorrow. We'll be live at uh, Richa, the hotel at Auburn. We'll watch the game there and set up our our stuff at halftime, and we'll broadcast for the hour following the game. So uh, please join us there. And Painter, where else can people find you and hear you? Listen to the lunch break, 11 to 1, ESPN 106.7, and I'm at Paint Sharpless on Twitter. Michael Pappas? My name is Michael. You can follow me on Twitter, at from Texas. Potato. I'm from Texas. I live in Auburn. I'm a cool guy. You can also follow me in the Action Network app. Went 1-0 yesterday. No big deal.
Do you want to you want to tell folks about your um, your new professional career? I thought you were going to be a professional athlete. Oh now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm embarking <laughs> on uh, my goal. My New Year's resolution for 2020 is to become a professional pickleball player. So. Uh, you know, send me some positive vibes. Yeah, strap them up, baby. Yeah, you guys are about to uh, sort of know a pro- professional athlete. All I got to do is make one dollar, and I'm a That's professional right. athlete, baby. I- I'm excited about it. Follow me on Twitter at Z Black. We follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Auburn. This has been another edition of the Locked On Auburn podcast. It's the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs>